Hey, thanks for joining me today. This is Pastor Lafayette, and it is Monday. We're in Acts chapter 23. Um, we just finished last week with Paul being imprisoned and finding out that uh, they were going to try and get a change of venue, get him transferred, and in the transfer process, they were going to have Paul attacked and killed. There are over 40 men who have taken a vow not to eat or drink until Paul is killed. Uh, they better hurry, because you can't do that for very long. <clears throat> We're going to pick this up in verse 19. This young man is brought to the commander. Verse 19, then the commander took him by the hand, went aside, and asked privately, what is it that you have to tell me? And he said, the Jews have agreed to ask that you bring Paul down to the council tomorrow, as though they were going to inquire more fully about him, but do not yield to them. For more than 40 of them lie in wait for him, men who have bound themselves by an oath that they will neither eat nor drink till they've killed him. And now they're ready, waiting for the promise from you. So the commander let the young man depart, commanded him, tell no one that you've revealed these things to me. And he called for two centurions, saying, prepare 200 soldiers, 70 horsemen, 200 spearmen to go to Caesarea at the third hour of the night. And provide mounts to set Paul on, and bring him safely to Felix the governor. He wrote a letter in the following manner, Claudius uh, Lysias, to the most excellent governor Felix, greetings. This man was seized by the Jews, was about to be killed by them. Coming with the troops, I rescued him, having learned that he was a Roman. And when I wanted to know the reason they accused him, I brought him before their council. I found out that he was accused concerning questions of their law, but had nothing charged against him deserving of death or chains. When it was told me that the Jews lay in wait for the man, I sent him immediately to you and also commanded his accusers to state before you the charges against him. Farewell. <coughs> Excuse me. Paul is sending this letter. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, the commander sending this letter. He is uh, taking Paul not into custody because he needs to be imprisoned, but for his own protection. So it's amazing how God is working here in the favor of Paul. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm sorry. Verse 31. Then the soldiers, as they were commanded, took Paul and brought him by night to Antipatris. The next day they left the horsemen to go on with him and returned to the barracks. When they came to Caesarea and had delivered the letter to the governor, they also presented Paul to him. And when the governor had read it, he asked what province he was from. And he, when he understood <clears throat> that he was from Cilicia, he said, I will hear you when your accusers have also have come. And he commanded him to be kept in Herod's praetorium. <clears throat> so here Paul is, <clears throat> being kept without any real charges. And because he's a Roman, there's not much they can do to him. If they were to do it, I mean, they treat Roman citizens different. I want you to understand something. Um, in the same way that there is a citizenship of Rome, there is a citizenship of heaven. And God the Father will treat you differently because of your citizenship. If you have committed your life, your heart to him, and have become a citizen of heaven, then God is not simply God a judge, God a creator. He is God your Father. Because of your unique relationship, with God as Father, <clears throat> he will do all that he can to protect you, to shield you, to keep things from happening to you that otherwise would have. He is obligated as, <coughs> excuse me, the king over his kingdom to take care of you and protect you. As the father of his children, he has obligated himself to care for you and be concerned about everything in your life. So it is today. Whatever the enemy's plan, whatever ambush has been planned by the enemy, whatever lies have been told, whatever things have been said, whatever is being done behind the scenes, God the Father is being made aware of the plots and plans against you and your life and your own, uh, your character, your integrity. And he's doing what he can to lead you, to take you away and shield you from the things 
that the enemy is intended for your harm. Trust in him, listen to him, and follow him. Father, thank you for the unique citizenship that we have among above anyone on the earth. We have become citizens of the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God. We thank you, we love you, and we trust you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you today. Thank you for joining me. Have a great day. Bye-bye.